Okay, Trudy, what's important about the Occupy movement? Talk nice and loud. Okay, uh, I think it's people getting together to make a difference in a bunch of different things. I mean, it's about people helping people, pulling together, um, how can I say? Um, not only do you make a difference, you meet different people, and then from there you can just make a, a bigger difference in the world than it is now. Um, I don't know. <laughs> who had their water shut off oh, man, all, all the way back in 2010 and now uh, a week before Christmas the city comes in and uh, red tags the house and evicts them I mean come on people where, where, where's the humanity I, mean, I understand you gotta have health standards but uh, you also got to be reasonable with people and give them opportunities to step away from the corporate paradigm. It's like, if these people would have um, said something to me, I could have put in an interior water system, uh, just turned off the roof where they could be washing their clothes and um, flushing their toilets and, and paying the city some minimal amount just for the use of their sewage. There could have been a kindness to it, you know. It's like uh, there's there's no room in the corporate inn for people in that circumstance, but it's just not right. The same kind of nonsense occurs for people who can't afford their heat, uh, so, um, or or their electricity. And there are alternative ways to do those kinds of things. If you just had the structure that would enable that to happen. It's like um, you can put solar panels on a house and a windmill on a house and you can run a 12 volt system and you don't have to live in darkness. And um, that's doable and it's renewable. And once the expense is incurred, it's like that's it unless something breaks. And it's like there ought to be opportunities to do that. And it's like um, all the food that we throw away in this country and yet we've got people who at Christmas time don't have enough to eat. And it's absurd. It's ridiculous. And yet there are laws that say you can't go into the dumpsters or into the back of the restaurants and get that food. Um, ask the companies, to, the corporations to give that stuff away. They just won't do it because it might infringe on somebody who might have come in and bought it. Um, I remember doing that at a shoe store where uh, I went into the dumpster where there was literally hundreds, actually hundreds of shoes and every one of them had been cut uh, with um, uh, a box cutter. And I said, what on, I saw the guy and I said, what on earth are you doing cutting shoes like that when there are so many people who need them? And he said, well, it's a corporate policy. One of my least favorite phrases. A corporate policy that said we might uh, miss out on a sale if we just toss them out and don't cut them. And so we're going to cut every one of them. Uh, I mean, th this is the ludicrousness uh, of the system that we have. We have all of these resources in what is a, should be the wealthiest and most generous country in the world, and yet it's America not being what our founding fathers wanted us to be. Um, and it's like, oh my, can you not see that the way that this 1% is doing this stuff is just not right, is just not good? that it is so far from, in this season of Christmas, so far from what we should be doing in terms of giving. Uh, it's, it's, it's so frustrating to me to see this happen. Um, I drive down here from, uh, from the north side today, and I see all the houses that are just falling down um, because the government and the corporations can't find a way to get those into the, into the hands of people who could live there. It's, um, it's just wrong just wrong. We need to make some changes. We do. We need to occupy some of this stuff. Now, we're here at the site of the strike of the United Steelworkers in uh, Niles, Ohio. The name of the company that they're striking against is Phillips. This is the Niles plant of Phillips and we're at that site now representing Occupy Youngstown and Occupy Warren standing in solidarity with our brothers and sisters who are here 
seeking justice uh, for the cause of all workers, not just union workers. This plant has been on strike for way too long and management has not done a good job of coming to the table and negotiating fairly. We're here to say that we think that that's wrong. That we think that there needs to be a change. We believe that more people need to stand up for the rights of the working class and that's what we're here for. As Occupy, we're here to represent the 99% in opposition to the corporate greed of the 1%. Occupy only did one thing. The summer before Occupy started, the constant drumbeat in the media was talk about how horrible the deficit was, how horrible debt the federal debt was, and all those state governments were cutting back, and, and we need to balance every single budget, and we need to cut back on everything, and that's the only way to economic wonderfulness. Uh, well, after Occupy started, all of a sudden, you still heard those voices, but you started hearing fairness, 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 over and over. And, I mean, now we had a, a bunch of little events rippled along. And there was the senator that, that's, well, now she's senator. At the time, she was just a spokesperson. And she kept talking, Elizabeth Warren kept talking about all the Occupy issues of fairness. And, and um, she was talking about financial fairness looking out for the average consumer as opposed to only protecting the banks and, and keeping the banks mm -hmm. up and honest. And so she's, you know, she's sort of a, she was propelled by Occupy, in my opinion, and she won because people believe in that. And the whole, the whole national election that's just taken place, they, both parties are talking about <laughs> middle class and fairness. And that wasn't talk they weren't talking about that before. What are the All front line workers deficit should know that or do that. Well, I'm going to give you another. I think she'll sprinkle you. Okay, you're on. I, I guess my biggest fear is that uh, people are starting to see that uh, in a collective voice, the Republicans and the right wing uh, have controlled and are controlling media. The media. Uh, and the, the issue then becomes a, a real division. We're divided. We're a divided people. And uh, when I go back to the legislature, I see that uh, no one has learned anything from an election. Uh, some of the right-wing Republican Tea Party people, particularly one woman, got up and started talking and ranting and raving about Obamacare uh, and saying that we don't want to do it. The governor has agreed the same in the state of Casey says, send it back to the feds. I think that's great. Um, but there's a real attack on working people. There's a real attack on uh, collective bargaining. When you only have 14%, 13, 14% of the people organized uh, in this state or in this country, and you have states like Michigan taking away collective bargaining rights, it's a real attack uh, on working families and on working people. Uh, and, um, you know, it's a serious issue when those rights uh, are taken away, slowly but surely. And uh, first it's Michigan, it could be Ohio. And you have big corporations winning this war, dividing us, winning this war, and taking away our collective bargaining rights. And uh, it's just one state after the other, and one, one person after the other, their rights are being taken away. So the significance, significance of it, of course, is that when does it stop? When will we rise up? When will we say that we're tired of being pushed to the side? Uh, our wages have not kept up. Our benefits have been cut. Pension benefits have been cut. So, you know, in the end, all of us are suffering. And that end is not um, is not a happy ending. It's, a, it's an ending that doesn't have to end this way. And I think some of us that are involved in workers, uh, workers' rights and protecting collective bargaining rights have to rise up uh, and be a little different in the way that we approach things. Uh, and sitting by and uh, being less aggressive, I think we have to be more aggressive and more progressive if we're going to win this battle. Okay, Don, tell me what is important about the work you're doing today. Well, we like to stand out here in front of the federal building, a.k.a. the Fed Up building, 
uh, against the wars, uh, the militarization that the U.S. takes part in, which amounts to $720 billion this year, because we want to bring the war dollars home, you know, keep the schools open, put people back to work uh, by fixing the infrastructure. So we're just sending a message, you know, every Friday we come out 3.30 to 5 p.m. at Cleveland Federal Building to give a message to the people, let them go home and think about it a little bit uh, as to why we should be, uh, you know, cutting the military. Uh, the military makes us less safe. Uh, it actually is uh, a form of terrorism because we use it in a destructive and offensive way. I wouldn't call it the defense budget, I'd call it the offense budget uh, because we actually are the best recruiters for our people that we call our enemies because as we bomb civilians in Afghanistan, in Pakistan, in Iraq, in Iraq, how many civilians? I mean, and we, uh, we were the best recruiters for those that we call our enemies, such as Al-Qaeda, who just says, look at the bad United States, and it's true. We have done bad things. We've acted against international law. Sometimes we'll have a sign out on Fridays that says, down the drones. The drones are the on-person uh, aircraft that are doing extrajudicial extra assassinations in Pakistan, Yemen, and other nations. Uh, you know, who, who made the President Obama or any other future president judge and jury when he's in the executive branch of the government where we can, where he can uh, sign a kill list every Tuesday as to what people we will take out with the drone, what, what people we will assassinate across other borders, you know, in sovereign nations with our drone attacks. You know, this uh, is against international law, it's against our own, our own laws. Uh, so, you know, it's just not right. I mean, how would we like it when we call Senator Portman or Senator Brown's office while we're out here, we say, how would you like it when other people get this technology, which others do have, and they start assassinating our leaders, our elected officials in this, in this city, this state, this country, and inadvertently hit civilians like we do so often. So that's what it's about.